creativesmoothie.com Boost your creativity. Let me tell you guys a story. A few weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night, drenched, completely drenched, in sweat. I was breathing hard. I had a dream. A bad dream. It was a nightmare. I was giving a presentation in a room just like this. With an audience just like this. Except it was going horribly. There was a large woman on my left who was snoring very loudly. There was this CEO in front of me with this big suit who was just staring at me, blanking, nothing, like a statue. And there was this little girl on my right with bushy hair who was just giggling to herself and doodling on the desk in front of me. No one was paying attention to me. What the heck? What the heck? In the back, I saw this really old man, must have been over a hundred years old, with this long white beard, and he squints at me, and so I go a little bit closer to listen to him, and he whispers, tell a story, tell a story. <sighs> got up, got out of bed, you know, got some water, opened up my laptop, and started Googling searching the internet to see what did this old man mean? Tell a story. What is he talking about? Is there something about stories that make presentations more engaging? Is that what I was missing from my presentation in this dream? I knew that I needed to find out the truth, the facts, and some proof that storytelling is going to help me make my presentations much more engaging. Here's what I found. Chapter one. Stories are universal. Stories aren't just something that you tell to your children or that are told to you when you're a child. No, stories are being told by all of us every day, all day. A uh, study by Robin Dunbar, who is an anthropologist, and evolutionary biologist who studies how people have evolved over time uh, found that two-thirds of all of our conversations that we have in public with each other are personal stories or gossip, which is a form of story. Two-thirds of all of our conversations that we have with each other are personal stories or gossip, so some form of storytelling irrespective of age, gender, background, doesn't matter. Where you are in the world, most of us are telling stories to each other. There's another guy, Steven Pinker. But he's an evolutionary psychologist studying how people's brains have evolved over time. Found that stories have been an important tool in the evolution of human history for learning new things. So we learn new things by telling stories and listening to stories. And the second thing is through developing relationships with each other through stories. Finally, I found a guy who, his name is Robert McKee. He is a, an award-winning writer, director, and he teaches screenwriting at a university in California. He had a quote that said, Stories fulfill profound human need. Not just on an intellectual level, but on an emotional level. Storytelling is an emotional experience. I read this and I said to myself, wow, young and old, 
spend most of our time telling stories to each other. Why should presentations be any different? Still, I felt this itch. I couldn't go back to sleep. I knew that there must be more to the story. There must be other, other things that could confirm that storytelling is important. You know, all this anthropology stuff is, is interesting, but it's got to be something biological, you know, something uh, that science can prove about storytelling. Chapter two, stories influence our brains. Stories influence our brains. And I want you guys to remember these three chemicals. Cortisone, oxytocin, and dopamine. Cortisol, cortisone or cortisol? Cortisol. Cortisol, oxytocin, and dopamine. Studied by uh, a guy named Paul Zak. He's a professor at Claremont Graduate University. He found that uh, videos of stories that were shown to people actually had chemical re caused chemical reactions in people's brains. Uh, videos being stories. Stories that started off with tense moments, lots of tension, resulted in cortisone being produced in their brains, which gets their attention, tension goes up, gets their focus. Stories that followed characters through some sort of journey resulted in oxytocin being produced. And oxytocin helped people be more, show more empathy towards the main character. So I understood the main character, I got them, as well as motivating them to be more cooperative and agreeable to what was happening to the main character. Lastly, stories that had happy endings produce dopamine in our brains, which makes people feel happy, you feel like you're optimistic, you're hopeful, and you're rewarded. And this was all in comparison to just showing people one-on-one -on -one conversations. So stories versus conversations. Stories resulted in cortisol, got their focus. Oxytocin, I'm now connected to the story and the character. And then dopamine, happy ending, I feel rewarded, I feel good, I feel optimistic. Wow! Stories can actually change chemicals in your brain in order to be more happy. At this point, the sun was, sun was rising, it was morning, I still didn't want to go to bed just yet. I knew that there must be one more fact that I was missing. What about sales and pitches, you know, sales presentations, it's really hard to sell stuff to people. Can stories really be effective when making a sale as well? A guy named Keith Kessenberry studied the ultimate venue for selling stuff to people, Super Bowl commercials, Super Bowl ads. What he found over a two-year study of over 108 Super Bowl ads. The ads, doesn't matter what the ad was about, doesn't matter what it was selling, doesn't matter what content of the ad was, whether it had cats or uh, cars. The more that an ad followed traditional story structure, the more that the structure of it had you know, a beginning, rising up to this climax, something amazing happens and it goes to resolution, the more likely it was going to be popular and successful as a commercial. So the more likely that these ads were told in a traditional story structure, the more likely it was going to be popular. And it actually was proven when the number one ad from 2014, which was called Puppy Love, it was about a dog falling in love with this Budweiser Clydesdale horse, and the dog really wanted to stay with the horse, no matter who wanted to adopt him. That was quoted the most popular Super Bowl ad from that year, and it was actually the same ad that he predicted was going to be most popular. Stories sell. I read that, I smiled. Wow, that is what that old man was trying to tell me. Stories are universal. Stories influence chemicals in our brains. 
And story self. Went back to bed, hoping for a good night's sleep. In fact, I had another dream. The exact same dream as before. This time, I was telling a story, not giving a presentation. The large woman on the left, her jaw was dropped completely. The CEO in the middle, he was leaning forward with so much zest, hanging on every word. And the little girl with the bushy hair, just smiling the whole presentation. I looked at that old man, crackly old man with the beard, and he smiles at me and he says, Good story. <laughs> The end. <laughs> All right, so Q and A. Any uh, really quick questions about either the studies that I talked about, uh, about your future presentations, and how you might change what you do in the future, or anything else? Come. Uh, uh, very specific question. Sure. How did you remember all the names? <laughs> uh, that was really hard. That would be really hard for me. They all seem. All these professors seem to have really unique names that just stand out. So there's no like John Doe from Queen. <laughs> it's like Kesson Baker or something like that. So yeah, but you're able to really connect the facts and what they are, the the name and what they actually do. And sure. that's the hard part. <laughs> for me, the, the studies that they did really stood out in terms of what they were doing is really unique. In most cases, they were the only ones in their field who really investigating this idea of storytelling. So there weren't that many studies that people had actually invested their time in researching. As well, their names just seemed to be really unique too. So it was easy to connect the dots between who they were and what they were studying. And a lot of these studies, like they're still cited. Some of them are from almost 10 years ago, but people still keep going back to, to them. That's where it is. Uh, Bay, do you feel like, is there anything in here that might change how you give a future presentation? I think, like you said, when you give a sales pitch, for example, what can you do or anything? It's just how you tell a story about yourself. It's not about keeping facts, like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. When you tell them a story, they're actually interested in you, in the person. If you talk about job interviews, like you're selling yourself in a job interview, tell a story. You don't just give bullet points of uh, what you've done on your resume, right? And it's easier for you because you know your stories. Mm -hmm. So instead of memorizing. Do you guys do that in interviews? Or is that something new in terms of someone asks you, so tell me about your work history? Saying it as a story instead of just saying, well, I worked here, and then I went here, and then I went here, and that's it. Say it as a story. I started off here, and it was really challenging, and but I really figured out how to be the best at this job, and I conquered that challenge. Really make it into this hero's journey, like we talked about, showing some tensions, my challenges. I was frustrated with this, but then I solved it by doing this. And in the end, I feel like it was the best job that I ever had, and I learned so much. Really, it's the story that creates this uh, feeling in the other person, and they really get you, right? In uh, advertising, which is what my background is, it's funny that a lot of the emphasis sometimes is on just giving these facts, almost like just pitching the product, here are the benefits, and that's enough. But it was interesting to read this study about the Super Bowl ads and said, and I think we all kind of know too, when we see all these Super Bowl ads, almost like the best of the best, the ones that have like a really good one minute story are the ones that everyone remembers. Everyone forgets all the other ones too. So. I just thought about the name. My they're really good at um, teaching us morals because they love to give stories. They always tell stories about the past. And we all listen to it, but when they lecture, it's a different story, right? But when they give stories, it's, it's what connects us. And we actually listen because we interpret the lesson from the story. They don't tell us directly, but we learn from it. So, I think, yeah. And it depends on how they set it up, too. They don't, if they set it up not as a lecture, but right? come here, like, I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me. All of a sudden, you're engaged and you want to hear it instead of just being lectured to. Right? So I hope you guys learned some facts about storytelling 
and uh, you know that old man will smile at you in your dreams. <laughs> Thanks. Featuring music mixed by DJ Corey Dawkins. For more, visit DJCoreyDawkins.com. <laughs>